Your, your parents would tell you things like, oh, but it's not a real job. You got to do this and you got to mm -hmm. do that. And I ran from music. Time is our most precious commodity. It is. I mean, some people will say, well, the opportunity might come again. Yeah, but it comes different. If you do not love this, I mean, love it from your soul. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people get into it for the fame and the money. They don't love it. I can get on a stage and I can have fun with two people or 20,000 because I love it. Mm -hmm. November 7th, we lost someone mm -hmm. dear to us, dear to you. <laughs> How did you took that? I was on my way to Starcom. We need this for people to know the untold story. Welcome to another episode of Gems from Friends. This is a podcast about entrepreneurs, creators, and professionals. My guests will be sharing stories about their journey and what they have learned so far while building their personal brand. You can listen to the episodes on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or if you like to watch, you can see them on YouTube. But it's important to subscribe so that you can get notifications whenever I upload new episodes. I'm just curious, what made you decide to start doing this? Yeah, what made me decide to start? I don't think you keep still, so that's why I asked the question. I, I don't know of you to keep still. So, like... Um, I don't know. I just... I just try to keep still. But it don't really work out. I felt like it was something that was needed to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so, I know this is your interview, not mine. <laughs> but I can tell you quickly. Mm -hmm. um, when I was about 18, I had this idea to do a magazine because magazines was the thing back mm -hmm. then, right? And I had this thing called Beijing Icons. And I felt like like we needed a platform for something. We need storytelling. Mm. Um, we have like a good story. Yeah, and then and because we got like so much talent here, we got like our own people in our community here, and we always looking at international media and media in different places, and then mm. we don't really like big up yourself, you know. Um, and I felt like the only difference that they have with us is that they have platforms that push them, and we don't per se. No, they have cool. true. They have all the PR. Mm -hmm. They have awards. Mm -hmm. They have this um, well, like imaging and everything. Imaging. Yeah. yeah. And then for for uh, and at that time I didn't really understand branding or anything like how you do now. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously to create a magazine, me being eighteen, don't ever have money for bus fare. <laughs> like, well, they're going to uh, meetings to the printery and they're telling me, yeah, it's about thirty seven thousand dollars to do this for this month. Oh, sorry. So yeah, so I had to put that uh, aside, and um, and I felt ever since every, ever since then something mm. keep nicking at me like okay, you, you gotta get back on it. Mm. It may not be in a form of a magazine, but mm. it's in a form of like what's happening now, which is kind of like podcasting, which is this digital magazine, if you want to call it that. Yeah, magazine motion. <laughs> there you go. Motion and audio, you know. I, I think it, it worked out when it was supposed to, though. I feel so. It was all timing. And um, and I guess I had to learn a lot of other things to be ready. Mm -hmm. And then you guess as well at a certain where they are in their life now. I think it's a good time, a better time now to do it now. So, yeah. So here we are. James from France. Okay. I, I heard a little bit of the story when you were talking. I think you were interviewing Somebody was interviewing you and you were talking a little bit about it. And I was like, okay, there has to be more. There has to be something more. But that's just me and my curiosity. Oh, you mean, I think that was Nicholas Branker when he was asking me. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Yeah, the first time I learned a white shirt with the bus stop or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Nicholas, yeah. yeah. That's Branker. So, yeah, he had asked me uh, what all about. Mm -hmm. So then I was getting here an intro on, on what this is and what I'm trying to do. Sometimes I don't want to fully understand what is it. It is... I just going with it. I just, I just feel as if something that God put on my heart. I then just, you got to do it. And then I start. You, you got to uh, do it. Every time I ignore it, I, I, I keep getting buttered. <laughs> keep well, it. then you need to get it out there. <laughs> I, I think we should all go back empty. Yeah. Every, every, every talent we have, every gift we have, we just give it 
Let's and a lot of it. people don't understand that they think their gifts are for themselves. Me personally, I think our gifts are for the people around us. Yes. And out community. there. Yeah. So when when we when we do leave this realm and wherever else we go, mm-hmm. we go back empty. I'm like, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm fresh out of gifts, I don't have any more. Exactly. <laughs> I don't and, have any more. And you get a sense of fulfillment too. Mm-hmm. Um when you can serve because like you know, norm like when you kind of hold it to yourself selfishly mm-hmm. like it doesn't really do anything i think i feel like it has to flow through you we're we're just vessels that just go yeah. flow things just go flow through and then when we do that our gift is one thing that it only gets better the more we give it yep like it, it multiplies and it, more abundance come is like an everlasting flow mm-hmm. but and we're not meant to keep them. Yeah. We're yeah. meant to, as you said, serve and, and give them away. They're not meant for us to keep. Okay. But well, what a way to start this episode. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Before I jump back into the conversation, I want to take a moment to talk about our sponsor for this episode, GibbsDirect.com. As a business owner, time is precious. I don't have a lot of time to be driving around searching for products, especially supplements that support my active lifestyle. That's where GibbsDirect.com comes in. It's an online store based here in Barbados. And let me tell you, their user-friendly website makes it real easy for me to find what I want, add it to my virtual shopping cart, and then place my order. I can then pick up the items at their convenient pickup location the same day. If I spend $300 or over, I get free delivery to my house. And here's the best part. You listeners get access to a discount today. Just type the word GEMS as your promo code at the checkout to unlock your savings. So whether you're a busy entrepreneur like me or just someone that is just looking for convenience and quality products, be sure to check out GibbsDirect.com. Okay, now let's get back to the conversation. The person in front of me is a voice we all know and love, Mm. host, radio personality at Starcom Network. Used Mm. to be on Hot FM and now on The Beat. Propover ambassador. Yes. And mother. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mm. DJ Tammy. Hello. Hello. (laughs) Hello. I like that intro. Maybe I should get that to use on my shows. I like that. (laughs) I try to improve them. (laughs) Yeah, I was a little poor with the intros before, but... um, Trying. No, better. you're not trying. You're doing it. All right, cool. Yeah, okay. We can, you know. I'm doing it. I'm doing, doing it. it. Yeah. Doing it. All right. So, Tom's the, you might have to call you Tom. You, that's fine. All right. That's fine. The first time I saw you, mm-hmm. you were playing, you know, down behind uh, Le Mirage and Bumper Wayne, what part name was? Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Sorry, I, <laughs> that, that's fine. I'm just like, damn. I think that was the first time I saw you in person mm-hmm. because I was only hearing you on radio, mm-hmm. and at that time it was like DJs on radio was such a novelty because like you never, it, we didn't have social media, mm-hmm. so you couldn't really see them. So you're what like it was always like this superstardom kind of thing. You're always like our superstars, yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, so when I saw you there, I think you were, um. Correct me if I'm wrong, but would it be John Doe at the time that you were playing with? Um, if if you're talking about behind Bump on Wayne, it wasn't Bump. It wasn't even Bump on Wayne yet. This this is this go by the late 2002 or or oh or, two or, or then 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 it would have been. It started out with Indian, then um, it was Hitman, and then John Doe. John Doe came like 2011, 2012. Mm. So if it was 2002, it'd probably be Indian. Indian. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, Tammy and Connection sound. Yeah. That's yeah. A little bit. Yeah. That's the first thing. That's what? The first, first time I saw you. So not to age any of you in here. Uh, but, that, yeah. Hey, look, I gracefully. One of so. one of the things I realized that you used to kind of like you you was one of the men though. Yeah. You used to be always like Pretty much. fellas. Mm-hmm. And I wanted Pretty to know what was it like um, coming up in an industry that is male dominated. What it what, what was it like then compared to what it is now? <sighs> Back then, the love which I still do, the love I have for it, it was to me. It was just letting people know, you know what? If you love this, you can do it, mm-hmm. male or female. 
you can do it. You can do it. And when it comes to what we would call like an argument, not like we fighting or anything, but the the words, the speech we would give before a song comes in. Yeah, we, we call it an argument. It You can, as female, it made it so much fun to twist around the argument and give it a female perspective. Right, right. Yeah. Right, right. and Make it more dynamic. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So back then, I know a lot of people uh, would say, well, wasn't it difficult? You're surrounded by men. I'm like, no, because as you said, for me, I was might have been female, but I would have been, I was one of the boys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was. I loved what I did, mm-hmm. still do, and it was just so much fun to just show them. Well, yeah, you look at it that way, but I'm gonna give you it from a female perspective. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that that was then. Now, I don't know if the women love it. There there aren't very many women in it now. And that hurts sometimes. Right. Because it, it's getting in it and being in it and seeing and knowing that you can turn things around to make it suit you. Yeah. Yeah. And to make it come off from a female perspective. Right. But I don't know if the love is there for some of the females that are there now. And that hurts. That 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 does tug a little. Do you think that there's a level of gatekeeping uh, when it comes to the gender? There was, Mm -hmm. there was, because I remember people hearing my voice, they would always be like, but you're, you're a female. And I just just look at them like, yeah, so watch me do this. Right. Yeah. So I I think there was, but that didn't last very long with me. Right. Because I I was, I was not about to take no for an answer when it came to this. Right. Right. So that didn't last very long with me. Right. I don't know, man, but listen here, Reed. I prefer to hear women talking to me. I, it should, it should see, never be that, a big that, deal. That's the thing. And and if you, radio should have both dynamics. Correct, yeah. Because you have you have the male perspective, you have the female perspective. Mm-hmm. And then when they gel. Yeah. 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 It, it's just a beautiful thing to listen to and to see. Yeah. And you don't feel as if, as you said, it's gate, gate kept by one set or another. Mm-hmm. So having both, I, I could understand. And I remember Warren Elvis used to tell me, he's like, having a woman talking to you in the morning works better than me hearing a man with a gruff voice. Exactly, it is a gruffy <laughs> voice. So I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> so in 2006, mm-hmm. you became a mom. Yes. And I felt like the nation kind of grew up with mm-hmm. your daughter. Storm again, like I never saw her, mm-hmm. but I felt like we family because it w- you were so proud of that. It was you made it part of your show, you made it part of the conversations you yeah. always you were in, and I think it, it kind of like helped us to yeah. know you better because that that was that that's important to me. Yeah, I mean, I know I have a life outside of my personality, mm-hmm. but for me to connect with those who are listening, yeah. I feel that they need to know some part of me. So it it wasn't a case where, okay, this is who I am on air. This is who I am off air. Right. No, it was the same person. Right. It was the same person. So for me, like people knowing who she was, I mean, not getting into the private stuff, but people right. knowing, okay, I just gave birth. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of days after gave birth, I... You know, went back on air, did some sponsor type, and went back to the hospital. <laughs> Seriously? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay, so give me the give me the the, the picture. You went into the hospital. Mm-hmm. How many days it took before you came out and went on air? Um, I went into the hospital the Friday morning because she right. was she was almost two weeks overdue. Okay. And the doc the doctor was like, okay, you know what? We're gonna take baby because I didn't know boy or girl. I did not want to know. I wanted the surprise. Oh, so it's a surprise. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was like, okay, we're gonna take baby this Friday because it's almost forty two weeks. Right. And it was getting a little dangerous. She was you know? comfortable in there. A very. She did not even want to come <laughs> out that Friday. So I'm in the hospital, 8 o'clock, um, nothing's going on. So the doctor says, okay, you know what? We're going to have to induce you. And I'm like, okay, thinking, cool. So get induced, and I'm there, and I'm there, and I'm looking. You see how there's this light behind you? Yeah. I looked at that light in my hospital room for 11 and a half hours. Hence why her name is Storm. Wow. 
<laughs> 11 and a half hours. No, no, no painkillers I had to go through natural. You did labor. it natural? <laughs> I, I wanted to, well, because there's a lot of medication I can't take. Okay. And I wanted to give her as much as, uh, as much as a a a, a, a chance mm-hmm. without having any any drugs or anything like okay. that. I mean, if she needed drugs afterwards, that was fine. Yeah. But as much as as natural as possible, as long so as that I could say, I okay, you know what? I gave you as good a start as I could. Right. Everything else is up to you. Right, right, right. Yeah. So then, and okay, sorry, Saturday morning, I gave birth the Friday night. Saturday morning, I left the hospital. Went did half up. Seriously. Went and did a half hour on air. Went back. To, I went back to the hospital. Went back to the hospital. So you still like had your bond or your hand yep. and all that? Yep. Yep. Because I, I remember they were like, where are you going? Even, even my doctor was like, where are you going? I said, I just need 30 minutes. I just need to get out for 30 minutes. Went out, did that. Back to the hospital. And then we went I would have loved to see that door like. Tommy walking cross from QEH and going over the I, I, I was driven. I was driven because I, I was like, you, you guys are either going to let me go or I'm walking out of here. Right. Yeah. And they were like, okay. I, I was a little crazy now, but I had that to do. And it was only 30 minutes. Went in, did it, back to the hospital. And that was it. You really love what you do. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's the one I could not. If I tell you that I ran for music. For years, I, I did everything else, and I just ran for music. Music was always in my head. Right. But I ran mm-hmm. because, you know, DJ people, people will tell you, your parents will tell you things like, oh, but it's not a real job. You got to do this and mm-hmm. you got to do that. And I ran for music. Mm-hmm. You weren't scared at any point? Any wow. Second, any uh, second main you mean when yes, it came you know. when it came to music? Yeah, when you were choosing music. I would say music chose me. Okay. Because growing up, music was always around. Mm-hmm. You know that little gramophone thing your grandma <laughs> used, and uh, all of all of my family just they were just singing and happy when it comes to music. Right. I had an uncle who used to DJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, music was always there. Whenever things got to be too much, mm-hmm. it was music, and not just what some people consider music as in the dance hall, the hip hop. I mean, I could sit down, I can listen to Bach. Right. I can listen to Beethoven, like Fur Elise is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the Moonlight Sonata, I love those things. Mm-hmm. So when I say like music, I mean every possible genre you can think of. Mm-hmm. And then it was how you could use music to deal with everything in life. You're hurt, music. You're happy, music. You're trying to make a life decision, put some music on in the background, mm-hmm. you're going to make the right decision. Right, right. Depends on where you listen, or which artist. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. Because music can influence some yeah, people. Yeah, I made a, a, a few wrong decisions. <laughs> depending on the no, no. I wouldn't, would you say wrong or just? But it was bad. De- it wasn't the best decision. Mm-hmm. Like, they got some times that you're getting in the car, and you're mm-hmm. getting on a move, and you play a certain song. It's like... Yeah, just on my way to make some bad decisions. <laughs> like, but you learned, there's right? A theme, there's a theme for everything, right? It's true. But, but did you learn? Of course I there learned. There you go. Yeah, so it wasn't all bad. <laughs> it wasn't all bad. I'm getting a little worried about these questions that are coming. <laughs> nah, it's not going to be hard. Not oh, be hard. Hey, I, I, did, I, I feel like this This is one. And when I, when I was like thinking about it last night, because I usually like meditate on it the night before. Ah. I visualize the conversation. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I feel like Tommy can just be like a vibe. It can just be like a real candid, real yep. conversation. Things can just yep. pop up, you know. But um, you talk about music. I want to know, what's your favorite genre of music? Oh, I have to pick one? Yeah, like if you had to be trapped in a room for a year <laughs> and you only had access to one category, what would it be? I only had access to one I'd probably choose R and B, but okay. like R and B from the seventies to the nineties. Oh, the seventies! I yeah. thought you were just gonna stop out in nineties, but no. you're going like way back. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. I, I, if if it, for a year and I could only listen to that, then it has to be music with a message mm-hmm. and music with lyrics that make sense. Right, lyrics that make you feel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so from the seventies, yeah, probably had some before that. <laughs> 
Let's not show how old I am. But <laughs> but yeah, from R and B, I I would I would have to say blues, rhythm and blues. Mm-hmm. If I if I could only listen for one year, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and uh, do you you read right? Yes. Okay. What's your favorite book of all time? A time to kill. A time to kill. Mm-hmm. Why? Because when you I don't know if you've ever read it, but if you can, and for once they got the movie right, this book made you think, yeah? And it made you see what a father was willing to go through, a parent was willing to go through because of what happened to it, to their child. Mm-hmm. And that's always been big for me because I'm the eldest of six. My mom has three boys and three girls. Okay. Yeah, so I've been mothering from the time I was six years old. So a time to kill, and it it made you realize this is the life that people had to live back then. Mm -hmm. And I'm fortunate that I don't have to go through it how they did. Mm -hmm. But it made me stop and think and go like, this is something people had to live with. Had to deal with, yeah. Had to deal with. Mm -hmm. And it made you look at things in, in a different perspective as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. What what time period was it, basically? Um, I think it was like the fifties or something like that. I'd I'd have to check to sure, but it's it's a time to kill. It's a okay. one time they got it right in the movie. <laughs> they got it right in the movie too. What's your go to for inspiration? Like just before you go on air, because one of the things I admire about mm-hmm. personalities who go live, mm-hmm. don't matter what they're going through, they gotta show up. Yeah. And like if nothing is happening mm-hmm. to them, it's mm-hmm. all about who, who, who they're speaking to. Mm-hmm. It may seem harsh, but those who are listening, it, it may seem harsh, but they do not care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They want you to cater to them. It may seem a little harsh, but it isn't. It really is not harsh at all. They want you to help them get through the day. Mm-hmm. So whatever you're dealing with, back burner Mm -hmm. and just go in there and try your best. You can't please everybody, Mm -hmm. but try your best to make at least one or two people say, well, you know what? I I can do this. Mm -hmm. I got through today. I'll get through tomorrow. Right. That, 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 that's it. That's it. So is there like a strategy or a methodology or something that you, a ritual that you would kind of go through before you present yourself? On air? Um, I let everything go. And when I say let everything go, I just say, okay, God. And I have, I have this phrase and I'm like, all right, I'm here. Let me just make, I can't make all of them happy, but I can make some of them happy. And I'm going to use what you gave me mm-hmm. outside playing out. It's, I got, I got to, I, I got to talk to God first. So I'm like, okay. I just want these people, when we're finished, to say, you know what? As I said earlier, I can deal with the rest of the night. I can deal with tomorrow. I can deal with my girlfriend if we're agreeing. I can deal with my boyfriend. I can deal with, all right, I don't know how I'm going to get through the week, but you know what? The set that Tammy and, and DZ or Tammy and Hitman or Tammy and just played or Tammy at work, I can get through the rest mm-hmm. of the week. Mm-hmm. So if if it's a ritual, is I ask him you know all right i'm here clear my mind i'm gonna use what you gave me right right and it goes from there so talking about going through stuff Mm -hmm. um correct me if i'm wrong Mm -hmm. november 7th we lost someone Mm -hmm. here to us Uh, Mm and there to you (laughs) how did you took that i was on my way to Mm Starcom and I'm literally on Spring Garden about to take the right turn by Holborn and my phone rings and normally I don't answer my phone but somebody said Tammy pick up your phone and I just pressed and I said hello and all I heard was you need to come now and I'm like I'm on my way and they were like no you need to come now and I remember this feeling like what is going on? What is going on? What is going on? And I, I got to Starcom. And as I got there, the ambulance was pulling out. And I'm like, 
And then Trace, the, like my phone is still on. And the person says, Tracy said, follow the ambulance. I said, what's wrong with Tracy? I did not know at the time it was not Tracy. It was Warren. So I, I go to the hospital and I'm there and I keep, I keep pinching myself and telling myself, Tammy, wake up. I, just, I still do it now. I keep pinching my right hand. I'm like, Tammy, wake up. Tammy, you got to get up. Tammy, you got to get up. And I was not waking up. And I remember I, I sat down on the ground, literally outside Annie. I just sat down on the ground and it got really cold. And Tracy called again, and I'm like, what are we doing? And she said, can you come inside? I said, no. If I come inside, Tracy, that is not going to end well. Because we'd been in that position before where um, he'd had a heart attack. Okay. And I'd, I'd met her at the hospital because she'd call, and she's like, you need to come now. Warren's on his way to the hospital. And this was like 2011 or 2012. But this time, something, it didn't feel the same. Okay. So I said, nah, Tracy, I'm, I'm not coming in there. I'm, I'm here if you need me, but I'm not coming inside. And uh, a couple, like an hour, not, not even so much. I, I say an hour because time didn't measure up for me then. Then she called and... She said, Tammy, he's, he's gone. And I, I said, gone, gone where? Upstairs, out back? And she said, no, he's gone. I think, I think I stopped breathing for a bit and I went back to pinching myself and I'm like, Tammy, get up, Tammy, get up, Tammy, get up. You gotta wake up. And you know, when people are around you, but you're alone. And then shortly afterwards, Tracy came out, which is his wife, Tracy Morgan for it. And she just looked at me and she said, the last time you were here, we had a different outcome. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. Tammy, wake up. And, um, what was it like going back to work? Funny enough, eh? In 2017, they had moved me from hot to the beat. Mm -hmm. And I could not figure out, like, okay, my numbers are good. People are like, why, why am I being moved? I could not figure that out. And because I, I remember, like, before we had the meeting, I said, all right, God, I'm going to go in there. Literally, my words to, to him were, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to give this everything I got today. And that was the day they, well, I went in. My shift changed from day to night. And then the Tuesday I went to work and I was told the Tuesday that I have to go to beat for 10 o'clock in the morning. That was 2017. And I could not understand all that time. Why was I moved? Mm -hmm. A couple months after, like a couple weeks after November 7th, 2021, I think I understood why I was moved. Because in all honesty, all honesty, I probably would have had a nervous breakdown. Okay. Because the shift, as most people know, it was him, then me. Yeah. And then um, Peter, then Scott or Scott and Peter, something like that. Mm -hmm. And normally, because what he was doing when everything happened was he was prepping for, I think it was Hot Carnival Safari or something like that. Some One of the gigs that was happening. And I was on my way there right. to join him. So I, I, I remember saying a couple months later, I'm like, okay, that's one of the reasons why you moved me. So things happen for a reason. And um, I mean, this might be a tough question, but are you, do you think you're a heel? Um, no. You're not? Okay. No. Okay. No. I mean, 
I don't get the phone calls from Tracy anymore saying, all right, Tammy, he's on his way down when we were playing out. He's, yeah. All right, he just left home. Right, and you missed that. I, I, I missed that, and I missed knowing, okay, we got a gig to go do. We're going to vibe in the, in the Jeep, figure out what we're going to do. Because we didn't, a, a lot of DJs make playlists. We never did that. Right. We just went, watched what was going on with the crowd. Mm -hmm. My job was to make sure I know what the other DJs played mm -hmm. and to watch the crowd so that when we were interacting, mm -hmm. like I like if he's about to go play something, I'm like, nah, that played like two DJs before right? and things like that. And back to your question, healed no. Because, I mean... Trace Tracy, she she's always been in my life. She's still there. And his birthday was a couple of days ago. And her birthday was a couple of days ago as well. Okay. So because he's he he was the 13th. She's the 16th. So, you know, it it it's still I know some people say, but it's 2021. I'm like, yeah, this is only 2024. He wasn't blood, but he was family. Yeah. He was definitely chosen family. You all, yeah. you all, yeah. you can't really see all separately. <laughs> yeah, you see one, you think about the other. Yep, it's kind of like that. I mean, he'd pull up a song, and I'd have the argument, and then he changed the song, and I'd look at him, and he'd look at me and smile, and I'm like, <laughs> "You need to slow down, sir. You yeah. slow down." Yeah, you know, when I heard the news, and I know we didn't mention the DJ name yet, but mm. we we're talking about DJ John Doe. Mm. Um, when I heard the news, if, what came to mind was Tommy. I was like, wow, like mm -hmm. how is Tommy? Because I don't know his wife. I don't know his, mm -hmm. other, his, his family and so on. Yeah. But I know y'all were really close. You know, spent a lot of years working together. Yeah. Um, Even before we used to work, because he worked at um, First Caribbean. Okay. And I worked at First Caribbean. Well, I worked at it when it was Barclays, and then it went to right, First Caribbean. Right, right. So we knew each we knew each other for decades. Wow. Y'all <laughs> grew into this thing together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And to this day, you feel like something is missing when you go out to do your trade. Like, you feel... Yeah. I... Yeah. Because there was the the vibe for for you know DJ and Mike person. There's certain dynamics that you must have. But I like I said, I didn't always have to look at what was on the screen. I just knew, okay, well this is coming. So I knew how to go from there. Mm -hmm. And no no disrespect to nobody else. That that comes along. I mean, we still got the Musketeers. I every once in a while, I still play with Chris because there's there's yeah. Renegade and yeah. then there's Renegade yeah. Musketeers. But they will, and I know people say you should never say never. But the vibe we had, and how the crowd responded to us, that will never happen again. Right. That was special. That was you. That will never mm -hmm. happen again. Mm -hmm. So. Times, um, mm. it just goes to show that we have to cherish yes. the moments that we mm -hmm. are in. Mm -hmm. And we tend to not understand or appreciate where we are any moment until yeah. it's not here anymore. Yep. And one of the things that we think we have a lot of time. We don't. <laughs> I saw a, uh, I think a meme that says, you always know how much money you have. Not always, because things happen. <laughs> but you never know how much time. And that that changed. I mean, two events in my life that made me realize the, the importance of time. August 11th at 7.30 p.m. And November 7th, just around 5.30 minutes to 6.00. That is the birth of Storm, My storm and, and the death, death of, of John Doe. John Doe. Yeah. Time is our most precious commodity. It is. You can't get it. Once it's gone, I mean, some people will say, well, the opportunity might come again. Yeah, but it comes different. Mm -hmm. 
time is something you cannot get back. It's like rivers. You know, you never see the same set of river water twice. Once it flows, wow. it, it flows. No, but it, it, it flows. Once, once that set of water passes in the river, mm-hmm. that's it. So now if someone crosses my mind, I call them. I don't have to, you know, talk to them long. I just say, all right, you know what? You crossed my mind. You good? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I stay in that moment. Mm-hmm. When it comes to my daughter, which goes without saying, if my daughter starts talking because she doesn't speak much. She, she, she's academic. She's, you know, her analytical and everything. Okay. She's a book person like me. Okay. Yeah. If my daughter gets into the truck and she says, mom, I look at her pull over. And if she says, yes, I don't care where I am. I'm pulling over mm-hmm. because we got to understand again, time is the most precious commodity and it's the most important gift we can give to someone or yeah. someone can give to us. So when someone crosses your mind, call them because mm-hmm. you may never hear them again. When someone calls you, once you have space, because sometimes you can't hold space for people because you're dealing with something. Yeah. But those who make up your tribe or your circle or your family or your heart, you, you make time for them because yeah. you yeah. never, never, never know. Yeah, and you got to change perspective too. Yeah. Because if you have the right perspective, mm-hmm. then no matter what you're doing at that time, you will you drop stop what you're doing. You, you stop. Yeah. Because you're regardless. Realize, whatever you're doing is maybe not that important mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things. You can go more often than not, you can go back yeah. to doing it. Yeah. yeah. But if, if someone calls you, and especially if it's someone that, they don't ask for much. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't talk much, and that person just out of the blue calls. Like I said, case in point with Storm, I'm, I I asked pull over. If she says yes, I don't care where I am. I will take the report if I have to, yeah. but I'm pulling over and I'm listening. Yeah. If one of my siblings call, and my siblings call me Mar, from the time I hear Mar, I stop and I'm like, let me have it. Mm-hmm. It once you're part, once you are in my heart, and I I know that you call me. Whatever happening, it, it's gonna wait. Yeah, it's gonna wait because you see time. We don't get it back. We Facts. don't get Facts. it back. I want to, on a later note, <laughs> we can bring it back up a little bit. That, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I want to say a name mm-hmm. of a store, and I want you to tell me what comes to mind. Okay. Linda's Disco. Oh, gosh. Vinyl. <laughs> Vinyl. <laughs> Turn tables. <laughs> the feel of, when you, you know, you, you, you. <laughs> this is going to show my age. That five cent piece on top of the head of the needle, and you put it down oh, sh- the five on the cent. turn table. Technics like twelve hundreds those, and you just <sighs> Linda's disco oh boy, <laughs> boy. <laughs> yeah, memories. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to get your reaction. To yes. <laughs> oh, I want to ask another question about mm-hmm. the women in your work field. Um, mm-hmm. what would you tell a woman that wants to get in? To this, into music, into DJing, hosting, maybe on stage and on radio. Like, what, what advice you have for them? How to, how to two start? things, two things. If you do not love this, I mean, love it from your soul. Don't do it, mm-hmm. because a lot of people get into it for the fame and the money. They don't love it. I can get on a stage and I can have fun with two people. Or 20,000. Right. Because I love it. And the second thing is, because it it annoys me when people tell females coming into the game this. They bring up other names. They're like, well, Tammy did this and Tammy did that. I remember one particular female. Hey, Gabs. (laughs) Someone was saying to her, well, you know, 
you should do this like Tammy. And I remember pulling her one side and I said, listen to me. You are not me. Mm -hmm. You will never be me. Be you. Yeah. When you go on, go into that room, when you turn on that microphone, if you're on the, the DJ side and you're the one on the turntables, let people see you. Do not let anybody put you in anybody else's shadow. Mm -hmm. Those two things. If you don't love it, leave it out. Right. And do not let anybody try to put you in the shadow of someone else. Right. Those two. Got it. Got it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Those two. <laughs> um, I wanted, before I came off uh, John Doe, I didn't, sorry to circle back. No, that, sorry. But it's one thing I forgot. I wanted. I love talking about DZ. Yeah. I, I want to <laughs> ask you, like, share a, a memory. You want any best memories you would, could share with, with, with you two? Oh, there are two. <laughs> 1999. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember e Quincy, who, who was part of Renegade, even put this on his Facebook. 1999, December 31st, I had the shift before Warren Chondo. So playing the music and everything, we on turn, it was having fun. And normally, DZ would prep his first track. Because at that time we had the vinyl. So when you see me do this, it means we were pulling up yeah. the records. Yeah. Vinyl. Got it. So he he pulled up his first track. Yeah. And he's getting ready to come into hot. He gets to the door with Quincy and the crew. And my last song is the song that he pulled up, pulled up for the first one. Oh, sure. 1999. <laughs> Prince's 1999. Right. Literally, as he pulls the door, he's like... Look, the way he looked at me, it was good. <laughs> and we, I mean, we were, we're cool. We we're friends and everything. He just looked at me like, <laughs> I think that was probably the longest. And he was known for his stoops. That's probably one of the longest, the longest stoops <laughs> he gave. There, there's that. And then a night, we, we, not a night, we went down to one of the shows on the hill. And we were like behind a lot of different DJs. Mm-hmm. And I said, he said to me, you ready? I said, no, but by the time we start playing, I will be. <laughs> and we, we walked on the stage and we set up. And he looked across at me and I looked at him. And both of us said, bless the place. Mm. Wow. As I told you before, we don't rehearse. We don't, you know, we no, don't just play this. Think. Yeah. yeah. And we looked at one and we were like, bless the place. And that, but the the night, December thirty first, nineteen ninety nine, yes, because we both started we both started Starcom in nineteen ninety nine. Okay, he was he came in October, I think, and I came in November. He was the month before me, yeah, or so, something like that, yeah. Okay, but those okay. two, those two. So I started something new mm -hmm. on this show. Mm -hmm. um, where? Oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you have to leave a gem for the next guest but we don't know who the next guest is but whatever comes to your mind whoever is laid on your heart i want you to drop something that would serve them but before you oh. do that before you do that mm -hmm. we had someone that did it before you okay what was their gem for me <laughs> Can you tell me or you're not looking so at So I think you should drop your, yours first. Okay. And then I will drop theirs for you. You could take a minute. It's fine. We could edit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to drop a gem for them. Yeah. You could think about something you know, that serve you for a while that you learn along the way. You know, Sesame Street. If I was a Sesame Street girl. Rush home from school. Watch Sesame Street. I love the old Sesame Street. So for my next guest, for your next guest, no matter, always remember, like Sesame Street had said, there is only one you. And as the saying goes, that is your superpower. There is only one you. Got That's it. your superpower. Got it. Got it. So that's yeah. your gem. So what we're going to do now mm -hmm. is we're going to play the gem that is... Or is left here for you? Oh, boy. <laughs> so I will say, 
we all go through our tough moments, Mm -hmm. moments where we feel like we're going through an existential crisis and we start to question everything around us. My gem would be that in those times, that's where you discover the most about yourself. And if you have a plan and if you've been on a path, don't allow that trauma, that challenge to overcome you, overwhelm you, or to allow you to give up on your dream. Don't give up on your dream. I actually think that what I'm learning is that coming out of this, I feel like I'm going to be better. I, it's funny, I can't see the full thing yet, but I have this confidence, this faith that I am going to be better for everything that I've been through. So I will tell the person who's coming next, you will be better for everything that you may be going through, whatever it is, whether it's something that you've shared or whether it's something you've chosen not to share, you will come out better for it. And don't ever let that moment, that challenge overwhelm you to the point where you feel like you can't continue to commit to the dream that you have. And that's it. Can I tell you something? Whether you use this or not, it's it's fine. For the first time in 24, 25 years, I told my company no. They wanted me to do something. And I said no. January 5th, was the last day I worked at the beat because I said no. And you see that? When I drove out of Starcom, I said, okay, God, what do you got? You see that? That was for them. Thank you. (laughs) That was for me. (laughs) You're welcome. That was. You're welcome. And just know that your gem drop is going to be for the next person. And we are going to be having a chain reaction. Mm. All right. So thank you for being part of this. Thank you for. I I was nervous, but I get nervous at everything. (laughs) But no, I, I think this and I know we're on the opposite sides of the interviewing table right now, but. We need this. Okay. And I'm not I'm not saying this because you're here. But we need this for people to know the untold story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And to be able to see people for who they are and in some cases understand why they are the way they are if they choose to let that come out. Yes. So I should say thank you because <laughs> I've, I've watched some of the other episodes from season one, season one, right? Yeah, season and one. then one and two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think now with everything going on, this is needed. Okay. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank I you. Try to keep going. No, you will keep going. <laughs> you will go as long as you're supposed to. Yeah. Till you go on to the next. And um, I just want to say, you know, there people like you um, d- don't really get the flowers that they deserve mm. because you're on air to just see you as, a, I don't know, just a voice, mm-hmm. you know, a machine. But I think that your role and your job is very important, not just the quality of your voice, but mm-hmm. the content. Oh, yeah. Of what you say. And as you said, you bring a lot of different point of views, perspectives, mm-hmm. and that is needed to help 
create the conversations that need to be had. And when I was coming up, you were one of my favorite ones that I would like to listen to because yeah. they always have this this spin on it. And it was it's kind of like educational. Yeah. In a fact where like, you know, if we just in a conversation with a bunch of men, you know, we just get one side. Mm-hmm. But when you come on, like, oh, cool, we have an opportunity you now to get that big sister side. Yeah. And you brought that and you're still bringing it. Yeah. So whatever yeah. the next chapter is, mm-hmm. it's just going to lift you higher. I know. Give you your flowers. I know. But thank you for my flowers. So you want to give you your applause? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Ma, I made it. <laughs> Uh, thanks again. Okay. Thanks again for coming, and I hope to Thank have you too. back. Just, just call. Yes. Phone call. Was it Carter? It was Carter. Somebody said phone call over there. And that's a wrap. Yes. Ooh.